In this documentary, I shall announce to the world that the Sumerian technology has been rediscovered, technology that has been predicted to arrive at the 21st century when the new age shall begin. Sumerian cosmic physics, bringing random forces into hyperdimensional order, removing the veil from the chaotic interference, mega dimensions giving birth to new entropy. The cosmic transparent virgin matter has been touched at the doorstep of immortality. Matter with chaotic interference is the trash of the cosmos. Pristine cosmic matter in superlattice is the cornerstone of the cosmic. Cosmic geometry Electrons, protons, photons, or even proteins can be ordered into cosmic geometry or sacred geometry. When proteins are in cosmic order, superlattice, a new dimension of life unfolds never to be known to us before. A new world is opening up. Nucleotides in order may also form genders depending on their spin interaction. Could be either male or female, not by sex, but by spin direction. Black and white protein attracting the white, being the female, possessing the blueprint of life that has been gifted by the breath of creation. The black in the male performing the labor and offense as well as defense. These condensed nucleotides unites building together the biomachines. Protein biomachines are the precursor of biofactories, such as substrate that producing ATP or synthesizes ATP. And these are the bionuclear machines. They replicate wave interference and optically store and transfer and proliferate life forms. This hyperdimensional intelligence challenging the human mind, life forms in sacred cosmic geometry represents physical and optical life forms. Two in one. They may separate or unite, and it is not as simple as a hologram, and there's nothing wrong with it to call it the physical body and the soul. Together or individually, they represent a new bio-industry, their high-tech capability surpassing the human imagination. They have complete control over hyperdimensional hyper interference producing coherency within the realm of cosmic order that is the cornerstone of all matter and the whole universe. Before I present this documentary to you, I have to take you back to the beginning of time. The universe must be in equilibrium. Therefore, it must contain two opposing forces, a positive and a negative force, force and a reverse force. 
At the beginning of time, forces released from the energy well, monopole, that when it happened, we recall it as the Big Bang. This free energy generated the gravitational flow and gave rise to gravitational waves and receptance. The universe was born in a split second and brought with it the birth of time, space, and the blueprint to life. The blueprint of the cosmos has been born from the breath of creation and everything in it is built to the image of the breath of the creator. Six plus one gravitational wave is the pillar of the cosmos. The one gravitational wave in the center become the new energy well, slurping in the other six, braiding the wave front from interference, becoming a unit. And then each one of these units again get it together and form a new six plus one and the six new unit will be swallowed by the new nuclear well in the center. And this is the way energy was being compressed into matter. As the gas is cooled at the Big Bang and the gravi gravitational waves cool and slow down, they begin to collapsing through the center and begin to oscillate. And these are the original first cosmic waveforms. Then then immediately begin to form an implosive well to oppose the forces of the Big Bang. The new matter is virgin, pristine matter as it's compressed from these waveforms. As the interference of the energy wave remains orderly in lockstep, in sacred geometry, this cosmic matter, some call it dark matter, in reality is transparent matter. They can form black holes, turning on anti-gravitational field in recycling matter. The opposing implosive force of the explosion, it countering the forces of the Big Bang. And when time retreats, aging reverses. In the visible matter, the interference is chaotic matter. In the galaxy, suns and stars, the turning out trash and aged matter, it's on its way towards recycling. We are imploding red giants, neutron stars, and going down black holes, disintegrating back to gravitational waves. Sumerians taught us cosmic geometry and cosmic math, but we were reluctant to listen and chose the linear system while we are living in a spherical one. In restoring the Sumerian math, still in my genes, returning from the past. Cosmic matter mostly pristine, and pristine matter, the interference point are organized and is in lockstep forming super lattice. Such a pristine matter holds the breath of creation and the blueprint to life itself. The pristine cosmic matter therefore holds the blueprint to life as the breath of creation is life itself. 
Since cosmic pristine matter is in super lattice, therefore is superconductive, further such super lattice can form an infinite variation of cosmic life that is far superior to us. Since it is energy rich, it can process CO2, for example, and water in the presence of air to make glucose and genetic components, nucleotides. They also produce the elixir of life that promotes life and cosmic geometry. The cosmic black protein is transparent and are the precursors of the mitochondria that in turn replicates the cosmiana, which then becomes the precursor of the chondriana, and the chondriana is the precursor of the mammal species. Now, I have done work on the chondriana years ago, and it's, it is on, on, on its way out. It's very exciting and very interesting that I was able to reproduce our ancestors and well documented it and reproduced the ancestor of many mammals as we coming from one common origin, the precursor of the chondria, uh, mitochondria, which is the chondriana. But this technology, what I entered into, and it's an entirely different matter. We go to the very basic core of life itself, where it be through blueprint held by interference. But this cosmic pristine matter replicating plant life that turns out sacred proteins and the elixir of life Pristine cosmic matter is the foundation of cosmic physics, unknown to us until now. Since the backbone of the cosmic matter is sacred geometry produced by orderly interference of energy waves, it is capable of storing the breath of creation with the blueprint of life, therefore replicating the predestined life forms as well as all matters in the universe. Such life forms has been discovered. I name them the cosmic incubators. Cosmic incubators are hyper intelligent. Cosmic life forms are erecting hardware and assembling them into bionic plants and machinery. The life forms are capable to process software to replicate life form from interference of waves, light that holds the breath of creation. The elixir they produce is being used to deliver the life energy and the cosmic order. The Sumerians try to tell us this incredible cosmic order, translating into a primitive language that now has been re-explored, translated into our primitive conception. The Sumerians themselves, 7,000 years ago, were producing this elixir and were telling us, as you have seen at the beginning of this tape, the cosmic flower that made of crystal producing genetic material with the help of elixir which came from the sun. And this elixir which I discovered is exactly the same as the Sumerian elixir. As I documented through this video, when I reproduced all the signs from historical remnants from the Sumerians, from their clay tablets and cylinders, what they were trying to tell us and matched it one by one to prove it to you that we do have rediscovered or I do have rediscovered the Sumerian technology. Now, I have a notion, which I always had, that the nucleus, the centriol, the cerebral cortex, flu cortex fluid, in mitochondria, and perhaps other organelles in our physical body, contains sacred geometry. And it also, also contains the elixir of life, which will alter the water 
the hydrophilic and hydrophobic properties of the water in the nucleus in the process of building genetic materials and DNA. Just as well in the mitochondria, the substrate, which is in sacred geometry, I succeeded to magnify the substrate of the mitochondria 80 million times and proved that indeed is in sacred geometry. One, two, three, four, five, six, and one in the middle. Six plus one, as the Sumerian were trying so hard to tell it to us. That is the basis of the cosmic math. Now, because for to make sacred geometry, you do have to have a substance which itself is in sacred geometry and promoting it. And this substance, I'm extracting it from the sun. And this substance, anything it touches, turns into sacred geometry. And this is what the Sumerians did. Now, this elixir must have or must possess qualities that are nucleus and the cosmos just like these interference lines, what you just have seen in color on the screen. We're missing 40% of the neutrinos from the sun. One may overlook that hydrogen and electron fusing on the sun may consume neutrinos. But I believe that that may be the substance I'm uh, extracting and put into liquid form from the sun, because I'm distilling this very same substance, elixir, with the Sumerian produced from the sun as they did. Now, it could be other uh, sacred matter which hides somewhere in our nucleus, whether it's a gluon or whether it's a gravitron, God knows. But we know one thing that this new substance, this elixir with the Sumerians had, has arrived and greeting us at the doorstep on the 21st century. Scientist proteins, or rather scientists made of proteins with gender, they design and build bio-machines following the cosmic order these cosmic life factories and they scientists arrive. The question is, when did they land? Or were they his time? Or perhaps I call them back via cosmic science as I discovered the sacred geometry in practice. Or perhaps the Sumerian never left. They just miniaturized themselves. As they could increase their size, it would very well be that they also could reduce their size. As you see, if you take the matter apart to its atoms, and the atoms apart to their waves, what they're made of, those waves, all that energy originally was in a monopole the size of a timber. That only tells us that we can take the world population and reduce it in size, converting them to free energy, and they would fit into a timber. So, civilization like the Sumerians had within their reach and capabilities to increase and decrease their size. And who says that a flying saucer or a foreign spacecraft has to come in giant size. They could reduce themselves and live here unnoticed. And maybe they've been here all the time. And when they leave, they can simply increase their size. Now, this is not science fiction. As you will see as we go on, and we will come the proof of the pudding. I have documented and actually did miniaturized and magnified life forms via interference cosmic order. It is like a hyperdimensional hologram. Imagine a flying saucer or a spaceship turned to microscopic size. 
actually, as you're using these uh, uh, machines to produce these holograms, depending on the size of the hologram and the distance the wave travel and producing the interference, or the size of the life they will reproduce. And they can even magnify or demagnify life forms. Smart proteins holds the blueprint to all life forms, including the biomachines. Ordinary proteins holds the biostructure. Smart proteins hold the blueprints. In interference of waveforms, and perhaps seek out and process information held captive in the interference patterns. Protein scientists born out of the elixir of life that delivers the cosmic order. As I knew it since long time when I was working with the Chandrianas, that I was able to reproduce smart proteins from the tail section of the spermatozoa where I located the remnants granules degenerated at ancient cytoplasm and I resurrected that with live crystal and put it back to production and produced a new type of chondriana. Originally I produced the chondriana from the nucleus of the bottom of the head of the spermatozoa as it entered into the ovum and produced the first haploid cell, which incidentally becoming the mammal's immune system. And if I take out that first four haploid cell from the ovum and deprive it from hormones and um, uh, nutrients, uh, with a primitive nutrient such as adenosine, gonosine, phosphate, I can force the further development they turn into chondriana what they were three and a half billion years ago. That gave me the idea to go and uh, recall them, or wake them up in our germinal cells produced in our sex gland and succeeded to reproduce the chondriana from them. From then I went to genetic material, chromosomes and DNA to use the information to reproduce the chondriana. And then finally, I was able to reproduce the ancient chondriana from the midsection of the tail of the spermatozoa where I produced the ancient smart protein. When I got to the shark chondriana, which incidentally had uh, fins and tails, when I called them back to life, the shark, the shark uh, spermatozoa and its tail still today can produce proteins, and that's why they can reproduce their tail if they get injured or rebuild their tail. And this is why the salamander can regrow its tail. Uh, the, those still existing, smart protein still existing in those species. And smart protein is holding the breath, the blueprint of creation. And they're responsible of, of uh, forming uh, RNA, DNA, and genetic materials. Uh, even though that today the, the DNA has to activate the uh, RNA, the transfer RNA, uh, to go to the cytoplasm uh, and in the presence of nucleotides, they are producing uh, uh, proteins. But this is why, because uh, we are degenerated and that, that's the way our system uh, is able to reproduce protein because we do not have our capability anymore to produce sacred proteins. Now, the cosmic scientist harnessing the cosmic order that holds the breath of creation. The arrival of this new macro science is the beginning of a new age. As we will able to enter into a higher cosmic plane, one of the criteria is that Sumerian water, that structure to cosmic order, 
by altering the hydrophobic and hydrophilic properties of water by mean changing the bonding energies and displacing the dipole moment of the water. And the water will assume the tetrahedral structure in liquid form and acquire these new properties. And such water is essential to all as it is found in the nucleus of a cell and some other organelles like in the centriole to build microtubules and spindles for cell division or in the mitochondria where the protein substrate that processing ATP is in a sacred geometry and it's superconductive. Or in the cerebral spinal fluid where the nerve impulses are transferred to the distribution points. Now here you begin to see some of the machine. This is the miracle machine, it's right in front of you. This is the gift of creation. A piece of machinery, sophisticated machinery, which contains a vortex disk on the top, which is black, that's placing the crest of the waveforms out of phase and break the light down. In the bottom, it's putting the crest of the waves in phase and producing coherent light beams, electron beams, proton beams. The bells in the middle are optical devices and the system is producing sophisticated interference uh, patterns where they lock in the genetic information, storing it. And then from that interference, which is held by the light, or perhaps a door. Now we can peek inside and we can see what's in there in the cosmos. But when the thousands of scientists will join me in exploring and learning and studying this system and gaining access to all their secrets and perhaps these studies and work and search will take decades but at the end the rewards will be there to change the world forever as we crossing the threshold into the cosmic high tech. The cosmic technology the Sumerian had they brought with them when they landed in the Mesopotamian Valley 7,000 years ago. Now the Sumerian literature they left behind and the artifacts has been testifying and translated and the Sumerian math and geometry has been restored. To understand the cosmos and how the energy has been condensed into matter the life process is self-controlling. Once we provide the elixir of life, such elixir the Sumerians had has been rediscovered. Now that I know what I know, I realize how little we all know. The atomic self-replication via hologram six plus one as the Sumerians put it, and they kept saying that seven is equal to 50, and they were right, because uh, the intensity is seven squared is 49 plus one is 50, and since these waves are oscillating through the center, at one point they're 49, the other point is 51, so plus or minus 50 is 49 or 51. So the Sumerians were right when they said seven is equal 50. <laughs> Put it in a mysterious way, of course. As the energy breaks to form the tetrahedra, the cosmic geometry condensing the matter from gravitron, scrolls, and light. Components of the matter 
within the microcosm is in sacred geometry, sacred cosmic geometry, exists in ordered interference pattern that holds the blueprint to the breath of creation. It is a self-replicating system via interference, hyperdimensional holograms. Throughout the universe, matter is alive, replicates, aging via star system or galactical system, then recycles through black holes. In a nuclear well, energy gravitational waves compressed into matter. In a black hole, matter decomposed and formed gravitational waves as you break down the light because that's what light is originates from. In a cell nucleus, generia replicates via self-hologram. In water structured to sacred geometry, ATP produced in the mitochondria, where the protein substrate is in sacred geometry, as me of which had a and if includes the part or when his form with the pre-spangy fresh game to create any of the ocean or say actually second employee the warm agreement with temporal theory or me feeling why six spirits just you attach to it and and uh, you just uh, raving over the wonder and the miracle of nature uh, here one uh, just uh, coming out from the uh, protein and unfolds and here again you know the, uh, the skeletons of the machines directly coming out of cells I mean you know this is another little uh, vortex being formed there here are the production of the of the uh, protein of course you know the little machine and the templates these are templates the the rods are male are black the white are the templates the white templates the female carries the blueprint and that's the way the creator wanted it. Uh, and the, the black ones are the male. So they attract each other and uh, the female is sort of growing on the male or the male, the, the, there's always the male come first, the black, and then the female grows on it. Or if they separate, the male goes to the female and they unite and produce the machine. So it's, it's beautiful, just like us. And uh, it's gender. Gender, not by sex, but by spin interaction or by other means, uh, but in sacred form. There's a little engine up there in the corner. Here a crystal just broke up forming the engine. See, uh, the blueprint is within the proteins, the rows and rows of proteins, because those rows and rows of proteins are the super lattice is picking up the waveform, the information, the interference waveform. And from that they recreate. So they can rearrange this waveform right inside these templates and turn them into sophisticated machinery. I mean, this is technology that, uh, you know, uh, you couldn't just dream of. This again comes from Sumerian clay tablets, so is this. And a lot of these things, you know, that have uh, been reproduced, that's why I put them into the tape. And this is when I wanted to uh, put them into alcohol, see whether they survive. Of course they survive. They converted all the alcohol into protein. And I said to them a long time ago, because people are asking that I have alcohol with alcohol in the drink. I mean, alcohol cannot form when uh, w w uh, in the presence of uh, ultraviolet and sun because it destroys the yeast. But uh, um, the taste, it's not alcohol. It's what they're producing. What they pro you can put alcohol in there, they're converting the alcohols to protein. The elixir itself has a taste as a very strong alcohol and it says no alcohol in it. I mean, you can drink as much as you want. You never will get drunk. You may get so much energy, you're not going to sleep for a couple of weeks. But, but uh, uh, actually, they're breaking down the alcohol. And I knew that a long time ago that the live crystal or the, uh, the, uh, the drink, the, uh, even the Renaissance drink, uh, which is really not uh, the live crystal, but even that uh, breaks down alcohol and uh, make it harmless. Uh, this is all light, what you see there. They're emitting a lot of light, like little spacecraft. They're coming out of it. And you can see them moving. There's two kinds. There's a black and the white. Now, the white has been produced from the alcohol because all those rows, you know, from the light, because they make the hologram first and they convert the alcohol into protein. This little machine there is spitting out the protein on the side. You can see that. Now, this is a line. This is a life form. 
but I stripped off all the dishes from, from it. So it, it doesn't, it's not complete. Now, you will see it in a moment. Here is the replica which is not alive. That's only a crystal. But the protein contains the blueprint. So you can form the exact same body. Like this, this one over here, it's pure crystal. It's not alive. It's not functional. It cannot produce because it's missing the breath of life. So the breath of life, the soul, is, must be part of it. If it's not part of it, it's the same thing, but it's crystal. It's dead. It's lifeless. And that's why I put them up there, so you can see. This is again Sumerian plant, uh, which they uh, show us, because that helps to produce the black protein, as you can see it over here. And uh, that, of course, you know, has a great deal to do with uh, collecting, manufacturing, and synthesizing, uh, or trapping the, uh, the elixir from the sun. And uh, this you know, really goes into very sophisticated technology to see uh, how all this is being done. But we are not to uh, disclose here process information. Uh, that is going to keep uh, confidential at the moment. Uh, but um, nevertheless, uh, it is very exciting. Uh, here again, one little guy gave me a lot of problem of uh, chopping up my uh, wave front, of, of rather far my optical uh, beams. Uh, so I had a tough time to photograph him. Uh, because he put me in and out of uh, focus uh, without moving the microscope. And, but they do that sometimes, not all of them, but some species, they're emitting waveforms, or perhaps they take my light and chop it up and use it, because they're hungry for that, they're hungry for light. And um, I noticed that a lot of time when I work in micros under the microscope and I have the light beam going through, boy, they have a feast, you know, they really become very active, multiply fast, and more light they get, uh, more active they become. And uh, that's another possibility that he may eat up my light beam as I try to photograph him. But, uh, you know, this is just for curiosity or interest. You know, I figured I'd throw that picture in so you can see that um, there's a vortex on the side. And that's what I want to put photograph on the left side. There's a vortex and that's a machine there. And whatever the vortex is doing, that's what's causing the problem. But he did not let me to photograph it. And sometimes I saw it very clearly, but I couldn't be fast enough to reach to the bottom of uh, the button of my printer to very um, a beautiful replica you find on the clay tablets. They're telling you this is the guy who has to be there in the process. This optical device, and this is the Sumerian coin made of protein and instead of stamping in the little bio machine, it has been built in by protein. And uh, this now you see my, uh, uh, my, uh, my blood. And uh, this is the Sumerian uh, plant again. Now uh, the, the, um, the elixir is passing through the cell membrane and the cell turns black and produces a lot of energy. Black because it's producing a lot of ATP in situ. Now, this can recycle CO2 right inside the cell uh, and supplement the uh, oxygen for respiration purposes. So it's very, very interesting, the, 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 the whole concept. And these cells just blew up, become giant. You see how big the proteins are there. It is unbelievable. And those cells become very strong, very powerful. And uh, they proliferate. Um, and uh, of course, uh, they will not tolerate any microbes around, uh, you know, which is a good thing to know. And uh, I had to take it because by condition, and they allowed to me to live and deliver you this gift of creation. Thank you.